I said we were done with Red Hat. I said we covered everything we need to cover. But there is one last thing we need to discuss, and that is Ulmer Linux and Rocky Linux's plan going forward. Because it's very clear that Red Hat isn't backing down, Red Hat isn't changing anything, and the real source code changes are going to be the future of Red Hat. Now, these distros could have just laid down and given up, abandoned all their users and said, hey, go use something else. But that's not what they're doing. Instead, what they're going to do is basically fight as hard as they can until the bitter end. So, Alma Linux wrote a blog post, our value is our values, and Rocky Linux keeping open source open. And whilst their approaches are fairly different, they do have the same overarching message. We are not giving up, and we have a way to get through this, at least in the short term, at least temporarily. Things may change going into the future, nobody really knows. For the general user, the only change is updates might take a bit longer to become available. The real changes are on the back end, where the packages are being built. But the only real change is how direct they can actually get the updates. So prior to Red Hat's policy change, when RHEL published a package update of any sort, security or bug fix, they published a corresponding source code into a repository. This was the public CentOS repo. Then Alma Linux integrated the update into our own build and test system, produced a new RPM and published it to our repositories. The first part of that chain, making things publicly available, is now broken. Only Red Hat customer accounts can access Red Hat software and is a violation of the Red Hat subscription agreement to redistribute Red Hat software, which includes using it in a downstream rebuild. But that doesn't mean the information isn't going to be available. This makes our job more difficult, but by no means impossible. The following timeline may be instructive and demonstrates our ability to provide security updates to our users. So RHEL 9.2 shipped with OpenSSL 3.0.7 on May 10th, and that source code was published here in the CentOS repo. Alma Linux 9.2 also shipped with OpenSSL 3.0.7 on the same day, May 10th. But then, Upstream OpenSSL published a CVE. This is separate from Red Hat. This is the actual OpenSSL project itself. 2023-2650. This is a security vulnerability rated at moderate. RHEL 9.2 published a patched OpenSSL 3.0.7 on June 21st alongside this security advisory. Alma Linux then published a patched version on June 23rd. So, what can we do? Let's say Red Hat goes Full mask off. No source code to the public, no source code to clients, no source code to absolutely anyone. Even in this case, there is still going to be information about what is happening to RHEL. So in this case, a CVE was made for a security vulnerability in OpenSSL. This is public information that anybody can see. And when there is a CVE in an upstream project like this, a patch is going to be available publicly. It doesn't matter if Google develops it, it doesn't matter if Meta develops it, it doesn't matter if Red Hat develops it, it is going to be available for anybody to download. So whilst Red Hat might not want to provide you with their patched version, all you need to do is make the patched version yourself from the same source code already available. But how are you supposed to know which vulnerabilities are being addressed? Well, even the most proprietary of proprietary companies, which Red Hat is a really long way away from, even companies like that will give their enterprise customers security advisories, because you need to make sure your enterprise customers are well aware of the vulnerabilities in their system to make sure they actually update to a version that is no longer vulnerable. And in the security advisories, it tells you everything going on, the bug fixes, all that stuff, the affected products, and also relevant to this case, the CVEs. This may not get you 100% of the way there, but it is going to get you most of the way, and for that last little bit, you can compare the functionality of the binaries, running your test suite on what you have available in your system and in RHEL, and if everything lines up, it should, should be most of the way there for what is important. The process is more labor intensive as we require gathering data and patches from several sources, comparing them, testing them, and then building them for release. But rest assured, updates will continue flowing just as they have been. Now, Alma Linux is taking a fairly wide berth. They're not going and just digging stuff out of RHEL and just sticking it in their system. Rocky Linux, let's have a look. They are being a little bit more direct. 
Previously, we obtained the source code for Rocky Linux exclusively from the CentOS Git repository as they recommended. We'll have a look at this one in just a moment. However, this repository no longer hosts all the versions corresponding to RHEL. Consequently, we now have to gather the source code from multiple sources, including CentOS Stream, Pristine Upstream Packages, and RHEL SRPMs. So this is a guide for using CentOS project code. This is from 2021. Do's. Get your source code from Upstream or git centos.org and follow the Red Hat trademark guidelines. Fair enough. Clearly describe your distribution as something you made, not Red Hat. This might be the line that some of them stepped over a little bit because they said we made it, but it's one for one compatible with Red Hat. Like that, I can see them getting weird about. I think it's dumb, but I can see that being a justification. Prominently include the following disclaimer when publishing or promoting your distribution. Red Hat and CentOS are trademarks or registered trademarks of Red Hat Inc. or its subsidiaries in the United States and other countries. We are not affiliated with or endorsed by or sponsored by Red Hat or the CentOS project. Comply with the GPL and all other open source licenses applicable to your build. And if you have an agreement with Red Hat, such as being a member of the Red Hat developer program or working for a Red Hat customer or partner, review the terms of the agreement so you know your obligations. Over two short years, oh how times have changed. Moreover, Red Hat's terms of service and end-user license agreements impose conditions that attempt to hinder legitimate customers from exercising their rights as guaranteed by the GPL. While the community debates whether this violates the GPL, we firmly believe that such agreements violate the spirit and purpose of open source. As a result, we refuse to agree with them. I'm sure that's going to go very well in the long run. I'm sure at some point, Red Hat is definitely not going to send them a very angry letter. Maybe send them some lawyers. I don't know. At least at this stage, this is the position they are taking. Which means we must obtain the SRPMs through channels that adhere to our principles and uphold our rights. Fortunately, there are alternative methods available to obtain source code and would like to highlight two examples. I'm sure they have other things in mind as well, they just don't want to talk about publicly. Using the UBI image, it is easily possible to obtain Red Hat sources reliably and unencumbered. We have validated this through OCI containers and it works exactly as expected. Basically abusing the fact that containers are here to stay, and people in the enterprise space want to use containers, so people in the enterprise space probably want to have a RHEL container. So Red Hat can't do anything about these existing, they have to be there. Let alone the fact that some people make third party containers for RHEL as well, so what, you're going to stop the entire internet? Good luck with that one. Another thing you can't really stop is we'll leverage pay-per-use public cloud instances. With this, anybody out there can spin up a rel image in the cloud and thus obtain the source code for all packages and errata. This is the easiest for us to scale as we can do all this through CI pipelines, spinning up cloud images to obtain sources via DNF and post to our Git repositories automatically. Are you going to stop companies from selling rel servers? No, no, you're not going to do that because the value lost by Rocky Linux is nowhere near the value lost by having people not be able to spin up servers. And Rocky Linux says, these methods are possible because of the power of the GPL. No one can prevent redistribution of GPL software. To reiterate, both of these methods enable us to legitimately obtain RHEL binaries and SRPMs without compromising our commitment to open source software or agreeing to TOS or EULA limitations that impede our rights. Our legal advisors have reassured us that we have the right to obtain the source to any binaries we receive, ensuring that we can continue advancing Rocky Linux in line with our original intentions. There is one thing, I guess that's two things, one thing I do want to address. I've seen a lot of people online saying, why don't you just grab a free dev account like any regular user, just download the updates for RHEL, and then share them over to Alma Linux and Rocky Linux. If they catch on, well, they'll probably delete your account, but it's a free dev account, so just spin up another account and go ahead and do so. The problem with this method 
is, as was being said here, the TOS and the end user license agreement. In that case, you are going to be agreeing to them. So I would expect there to be some angry letters, some angry lawyers, and plenty of video worthy content if someone involved in those projects is caught doing so. That seems like a legal nightmare that you really don't want to get involved with. Because while these projects do have legal advisors, they're not multi-billion dollar companies. Red Hat has a lot more lawyers. With that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if there were some people involved in the project who were doing so, but they're certainly not going to be talking about that publicly. They're going to talk about the things where Red Hat cannot sue them, and they can just go about their day. Probably. Red Hat's still not going to be happy about it. But assuming Red Hat doesn't come after them, the free dev account is another thing they're probably not going to get rid of. Like, the free dev account is so valuable to getting people into the real ecosystem. So really, you could just spin up accounts until Red Hat sends you a letter. Going back to Ulma Linux, they want to address the whole freeloader thing. They don't think they're just a distro that freeloads off a of RHEL. They think they do a lot of really important work for RHEL and also the wider community. For the Enterprise Linux ecosystem, we prevented fragmentation by enabling the use of CentOS SIGs within Alma Linux. This includes a lot of software that a lot of users really relied on. This is a move that other downstreams emulated. We advocated for RHEL build roots in the CentOS build system for this purpose as well. This ensured that work and effort would stay centralized and keep code flowing upstream. We expanded platform support to a new architecture, Raspberry Pi, and helped the EL repo project secure a sponsorship for ARCH64 hardware to build for it. We currently have close to 80,000 ARCH64 systems running Alma Linux. We also made monetary contributions and participated in Fedora Flock, Nest, CentOS Connect, and Dojos, and even OpenSUSE Conf. Part of the draw of a product or distribution is the community around it, and we've enriched the community around RHEL and CentOS Stream. But we've also enriched Upstream. Alma Linux community members have submitted PRs to projects such as RPM, AWX, and VirtualBox. Our community has sent over 50 PRs to GlusterFS and also extended OpenQA. A Red Hat employee even thanked us for enabling Fedora tests to run on ELN and RHEL. An Alma Linux contributor was so fired up by our community that he now helps maintain over 600 Fedora and extra packages for Enterprise Linux EPL packages, including some highly used ones like CertBot, Brotly, iperf3, imap sync, and countless Python libraries, many of them as the primary contributor, maintaining them for the greater Fedora and Enterprise Linux ecosystem, EPL is tremendously important to both Red Hat and RHEL users. And with that, I wish them the best of luck, both Alma Linux and Rocky Linux, because the path going forward is going to be a little bit rocky. It's going to be a little bit rough, and it's unclear if these distros can really exist into the long term. Short term, yes. Short term, while people try to migrate to other systems and aren't really sure what's going to be happening, absolutely. But three, four, five, ten years down the line, I don't know where we're going to be, and anyone who's trying to claim they do is either a time traveler or completely lying. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. This should hopefully be the last time we talk about this, at least for a couple of months. I'm sure I'm going to do like some sort of retrospective or something like that, but for now, that is all. That is the end of the saga. I'll put all the videos in a playlist, so if someone wants to go back and watch whatever was going on, go ahead and do so. That's going to be it for me. Uh, if you like the video, go like the video, and if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon scribes that are very linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and Red Hat out.